From strategic additions like the Coach Challenge being solidified to the nuanced approach taken towards strategic fouling, let's look at the most important evolutions in the NBA rulebook these past few seasons. Unselfish move. Well, I don't know if you saw it. Then he planted a kiss on Tracy McGrady, <laughs> kind of Dick Bavetta style as he ran back. First things first, Hackershack should have been introduced during Diesel's career. The league new teams were exploiting Shaq's poor shot accuracy by fouling him constantly and sending him to the free throw line. So much so that it became the only way teams could contain the giant inside the paint and it haunted him till he retired in 2011. Mind you, the NBA knew letting teams do this was harmful to the way the game was played, but containing Shaq was too important. And just like with the Reggie Miller rule, the league didn't deal with it till after O'Neal retired and their hand was forced by teams fouling poor free throw shooters as a way to gain possession. So called hack a shack and I know we sent a release out already. We adopted a new rule there. I would say it's not everything that some people were looking for us to do, and it was a compromise. To make matters worse, it almost always happened in close games in the last quarter, taking away from the game flow and excitement. So in 2016, the NBA made fouls in the last two minutes of each quarter to not only grant a free throw to the opposite team, but also gave them possession of the ball. Making this simple addition to the rule book made strategic fouling pointless because the entire point was gaining possession in close situations. Who knows how many rings Shaq would have had before retirement if they let him play on a level playing field. But maybe that's why it was necessary to contain him. This wasn't even the only rule the NBA changed after Shaq retired. That would have made his career much easier. It's gotten increasingly harder to get away with fouls in the NBA. They just added the rule fans have been begging for since the early 2000s. The officials have have added a much higher penalty for transition take fouls. Teams had gotten into the habit of causing intentional fouls to break any kind of fast-paced action, and that caused a break in play that fans didn't exactly enjoy. So under the new guidelines introduced in the 2022-23 season, the team upon whom the foul is committed now gets a free throw taken by any player on their team and retains possession after the throw is taken, as opposed to a simple side out in the previous rules. I think the most important part of this amendment is not giving the defending player anything more than a common foul. Because intentional fouls are strategic moves made by coaches and teams as a whole. So yeah, penalizing the individual is going a bit overboard and doesn't really solve the central problem of changing possession. However, the step back three isn't the only shot under scrutiny by the NBA. The league wants to add some complexity to the pump fake shot. Players in recent times have just gotten way too good at manipulating or skirting the rule book to create fouls to their advantage. And the pump fake shot has gotten really popular with the attacking players because of how easily it can cause a defender to foul. The shot forces a player to go into a range of motion that he can't get out of once the shot fake is completed and then has nowhere to go but head first into a foul. Another thing fans didn't like to see. So after pressure from the fans, the NBA attempted to stop this in the 2020-21 season. They added a rule prohibiting overt, abrupt, or abnormal non-basketball moves, giving the defense recognition for a good play, rather than punishing them with fouls. Now, if an attacking player makes a defender jump and then leans into them in the air, causing a foul, or if a ball handler is running from a defender before break checking him and forcing a collision, the attacking team won't be making it to the free throw line like before. Both fans and players are really applauding this rule for improving the quality of play in the NBA and removing a pretty annoying technicality. Thank God the NBA is open to suggestions, right? After all, it's why they've allowed the coaches challenge. The NBA announced the experiment as a thundering success. After the 2020 season, it wasn't confirmed whether the fans would have this incredible strategic addition every season when the NBA put it in for a test run. But positive reviews from the players the fans and the coaches themselves
themselves have made it a beloved part of the sport. Coaches are often in a much better position than players to call certain fouls because they aren't caught up in the heat of play, and the rule allows them to make a singular challenge against any call made on their team by an official. In the past, you may have seen coaches getting extremely agitated with a call they didn't agree with, and this led them to being sent off or fined or even suspended. And that's obviously pretty bad for a team that's just been fouled. But now, things are different. This instant replay type of addition makes it much harder for players to get away with illegal moves, which is always welcome. The rule's fairly new and open to modifications, like increasing the number of challenges a coach has, or retaining your singular challenge if you're proven right. But for now, just including the coaches in the foul calling has added more excitement to the strategy. Now, poor Shaq may not have achieved these protections throughout his career, but some have been luckier than him. Players like James Harden, for one, have managed to bend the rules in his favor. The Philadelphia 76er superstar forced a rule addition because of his unique three-pointers. Harden's step-back shot is one of the most technical shots any player has ever coined, and it's so hard to guard with Harden's accuracy that teams have been complaining about it to the officials for years now. They claim James travels with the ball, taking three steps after he makes contact with the ball to shoot or pass, rather than the permitted two in the game. It can look pretty funky the way Harden does it, but NBA officials have often defended the rule, and they recently added a formal definition of what a gather means to stave off some of the heat against Harden. The new rules let players take only two steps, like before, but the definition of gathering the ball now includes parameters, allowing players to place two hands on the ball, or stop it in another way, and gain enough control of it to change hands, pass, shoot, or cradle it. The two steps allowed kick in after a player completes the gather. This completely absolves Harden of most accusations, and only when he misses his rhythm now and then does he end up carrying the ball. The NBA really wants to make the game more entertaining, and has removed some restrictions on veteran players too. The league now allows old-timers to take a breather in the season. As long as it's not a nationally televised game, older players can avoid the $100,000 fine the NBA has on players resting between games. ESPN's Tim Bontemps reported a memo being sent out to all the major teams when the rule was being announced, letting them know that they can leave out veterans as long as they have a substantial role in the team's advancement into the 2020 playoffs. They could also rest players if they were recovering from COVID-19 during the time out of concern for the athlete's health. That year saw a couple of other rule modifications made just for the sake of player health in COVID-19, like increasing the player roster from 13 to 15 in case some players haven't fully recovered and giving more options for coaches in case an outbreak were to happen during practice. The rules were temporary with little long-term implications. Well, folks, that's our list of the most shocking rule changes in the NBA.